Well, good afternoon, good morning, or good night, whatever time you're watching this. You have found the YouTube channel for the Geyserville Christian Church, and you are welcome here. You are welcome. It's a good place to be. Um, we are still in lockdown. I know there's some churches that are starting, but we're not going to do that, as I've repeated and repeated and repeated. I do not want to be the pastor that kills his church. So we'll stay apart until we're super safe. Anyway, uh, let's pray. Holy and loving God, thank you for this space, this place. Thank you for us, this gathered community that is spread out so far. Thank you for holding us together. Thank you for the love that binds. And I thank you for all of this. I ask you now to be with us in this service, be in our words and our prayers and our songs. And I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And let us turn to number 27. I invite you. I we're here we're doing our church church thing as Christiane says we are churching so grab something for communion something for the plate something for the cup uh, this is an open table I have not invited you here Jesus has so you are welcome if this was a regular service and we were all gathered together, you would still be welcome because this church will not turn anyone away regardless of creed, lifestyle, or anything. So thank you for your donations. Thank you for the money that's coming in. Uh, at the end page, there, is a, there are places you can find where you could make donations electronically or our address where you could uh, send a check. Please do. 
and uh, a phone number and email by which you could contact us for prayers. And speaking of prayers, let us pray for the ones that are hurting, the ones who are lost, the ones who are sick, the ones who have no hope, the ones who have lost love and have nowhere to look, bless us, hold us, keep us. Hold this nation together. Bless us and keep us safe and keep us, keep us who we believe we are to be. And I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And let us turn to number... Well, number six, seven, and eight. In your little book, it is what we call the world famous medley number one. Well, as I'm thinking about it, we don't call it anything. I call it the world famous medley number one because an old music minister that I worked with named Ruthie called it world famous medley number one. So here we are.
And then number 37, and I would like to extend personal thanks to Jim Manley who wrote this song for giving us permission to use it. It's very generous of him. Thank you, Jim. Jim's a good guy. He's written several songs that are really worth knowing, and this, this is one of them. Part of the family. song is when we're singing it and someone comes in the door to worship with us and uh, it's just like come on in you are part of the family anyway number 83 and this was written by a woman named Jerry Huntley it's called the friendly church on highway 101 it was written in 1984 for our 100th anniversary celebration. So thank you, Jerry. Number 83. There's a little church along the busy highway called the Friendly Church on Highway 
friendly. And now, in our rotation of readers, uh, I'm going to ask Christiane Schwartz, our Minister of Music, and I forgot to introduce Pat Simmons back there, the keyboardist and musician extraordinaire. And, uh, but Christiane, would you read this reading today? I will. The reading today is from the indiscriminate host from John Shea, Stories of Faith. With Jesus, it always ended that way. A hook in the heart in the guise of a question. Who proved neighbor to the man in need? What son did the will of the father? What will the king do to these men? Is it right to do good on the Sabbath? Now who is the host and who is the guest when the one invited in turn invites? It was the much in Madeline that Jesus loved. For as Mark says, he was too much for them. Like a woman who loves too much and is spilled too much. Like a 70 times seven God who forgives too much like a seed that grows too much and yields 30, 60, 100 fold. It was the much in meals that Jesus loved. The baskets of bread left over, the fishes still to be eaten, and the table companions brimming, amazed that they are cherished too much, reeling at the extravagance of Jesus overtaken by the lavish God Thank you. Thank you. Before I start, I would like to point out that I was on a retreat back in the middle 80s, and it was based on this story, The Indiscriminate Host. And we're sent on a break to meditate on the things we had heard, and this is what I had just heard. And I actually had this guitar with me, and I wrote the first song, I Invite You to Invite Me. That mixed up thing that Jesus does that we aren't ready for. Hosting. This is a reflection on love, and it's part four in a long series. We are Moving in, we're moving through Lent. We've started Lent. Um, I've put some purple flowers up, but our theme is love, and I'm hanging with the hearts, folks. I'm I'm staying with hearts and uh, Valentines, because it's all about God's love, and it's all about God's love in our hearts. So you want to throw a big party? A big party. Maybe it's your birthday, or maybe it's sometime in that far off future and the pandemic's over. You wanna be host. You wanna host a grand get together, a party. You want a party. You wanna invite just everybody. You wanna fill your halls with jubilance and laughter and love and brilliant conversation and your friends and besties, just everyone. And well, then they start showing up and dang it anyway, and God bless their pea picking little souls. Jude can't get along with Joe Cindy just can't stand to be near Sally, and Ronald just wants to brag and strut. And Wilson is allergic to your cats, and you totally forgot that Bonnie is vegan and Johnny is paleo. Someone shows up in a tux, another in Levi's, not to mention the crazy who is topless and in a thong. 
Holy mackerel! How did you go so wrong? What can you do? Cast them all out into out, outer darkness? Just drop dead on the spot? Now well, that might be my choice. How, how can you be that indiscriminate host and have any moral values, standards, or at the least find the coping skills and grace to let the party become what it will? I suppose you could take the position that being like Jesus is just one bridge too far, one challenge too many, or just not worth it in the end. You could. But what about that table of abundance at which you've been eating? What about all of God's grace you've hogged down? Or, and darn it anyway, what about all the times you might have embarrassed or inconvenienced God or squandered the hope, love, grace, forgiveness you've been given? What about that? So if we really think about it, honestly, and in the hard light of self-scrutiny, we have to admit that before God, we are all horribly inappropriate at times. And yes, that is really us showing up to God's party topless and in a thong and asking for the very things God did not set the table with. And then, do you really want to turn in your Christian card and give up all that ongoing grace, salvation, and forgiveness you've been receiving just to control the party? Do you really? So here we are. stuck with hosting, a party we can't control, a life we can't live the way we think we should, with guests we can't make like us, and all we can do is to say, thank you, God. Thank you for the opportunity to serve, to have a party, to share your gifts, regardless of whether we think they are used appropriately. Gulp. All we have to say in the end is, thank you, God. Amen. Amen. And one thing I'm going to start doing off and on in this series is to invite artists and musicians to come in and sing songs that are sort of appropriate, not so much to the theme of the day, but to the theme of love. And today, by coincidence, I have Christiane Schwartz right here with a song she wrote. I am home if you want to follow it. It's number 103 in your book. And uh, I want to just say beforehand, I hate that I did not write this song. Just saying. It is a gorgeous, but make up your own mind. Well, you, you did just write that sermon, and that was pretty amazing. That's our pastor, Hillary Marks. I come to the table so empty.
And now our communion acclamation, which is number, a number that's not in here, is it? Uh, <laughs> I did it again. Okay, so I will have it up on the screen and remember to get it in. table. I hope you found something to share. Years and years ago, uh, Sherry is my, if you don't know, uh, I'm married to a woman named Sherry. And she is also an ordained minister. She ser serves a church in Ukiah. And um, but one time she did a worship service, and I think I may be wrong on this, but she was basing it on our reading today. And she took a table and she mounded it with fruit and nuts and breads and wines and juices and everything. It was piled high. And she's she says, God's table is not skimpy. <laughs> I've always liked that. God's table is not skimpy. You don't have to go hungry at God's table. So we've gathered. We've gathered in the abundance that is God, in the abundance of that hillside in Galilee, when the loaves and the fishes came out and there was only few loaves and a few fishes, and there were 5,000 people to feed them with. Actually, I said that wrong because you aren't feeding the 5,000 of the fishes and the loaves. You're feeding the loaves to the 5,000. Hope you knew what I meant. But anyway, there wasn't enough. But Jesus prayed over the food, and he blessed it. And they started handing it out. And there was always more, always more, more and more. And there's more people and there's more food. And they started off with such a small amount and ended up with 5,000 people fed and stuff left over. That is one of the most amazing stories about God's abundance that you can find. We celebrate that here. Jesus took bread and broke it. So this is me broken for you. Yes, broken for you, broken for me, broken for us. And the abundance of God is on this table, in this bread, in this cup. And Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and he gave thanks and he said, this is now the cup of the new and the everlasting covenant. It's me 
poured out for you so that your emptiness might be filled. This bread is Jesus, broken for you so that your woundedness and brokenness can be patched together and healed again. And this table, with all the miracles attached to it, all the joy attached to it, is based on one thing. The absolute, absolute love of God. For here you find it in abundance. And this table is set and all of you, all of us, everyone is welcome at it. Amen. God bless you. And thank you. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for this bread and this cup. Thank you for this this church, this building, the people, the love and the life and the laughter that's here. And this table, thank you for this table where there is always enough and thank you for your love. Amen. Amen. Last song, number 129. I thought we'd go out on a on a really intense praise song. something I haven't done for a while and that's pray uh, end this service with the Lord's Prayer and a short benediction so let us pray the prayer Jesus taught me and you and you and you anyway our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the glory, kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Go in peace. Go in love. Go in love. Be love. Amen. There's a little church along the busy highway Called the Friendly Church on Highway 101 Small town people gather there To sing and offer prayer And the pastor shakes